What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Hope you're not falling out of your seat due to pure boredom with these Bitcoin and cryptocurrency prices as Bitcoin continues to go sideways, leading into a very big start to this week in traditional markets. We're going to see, are we going to be able to actually stay above at these all-time high levels or are we looking for a massive correction? Lots of people asking, are we in a bull market? Are we in a bear market? Well, Actually, CNBC has recently come out and clarified we are, in fact, in a kangaroo market. So there you go. Now we have our answer. Thank you for that clarification. All right, but in all sincerity, lots of people do ask me my opinion on Bitcoin. You guys know I am a long-term Bitcoin bull, but what about the bearish scenario? What about the worst case scenario? Well, obviously the worst case scenario is Bitcoin goes to zero. That's not gonna happen, in my humble opinion, but I will talk about today some possibilities for maybe a 20%, 30%, 40%, even 50% dump for Bitcoin, but guys, don't freak out, don't worry. Today's video is not all just about the bearish scenario. I do want to talk about this guy right here. Do you guys know who this is? His name is actually Brian Brooks, and he has recently been appointed by Trump as the comptroller banking regulator. Why is this bullish? Who? Why should we care? Well, his previous job was at Coinbase, and he does have quite an extensive knowledge about blockchain technology. So I do want to talk about that, and I also want to discuss, of course, Bitcoin being the solution for the ultimate rigged game, which is the monetary policy. And if all that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Also, today is the last day for the Ledger Nano S. If you want to win to enter, drop a comment below on any video you are eligible and we'll give that away on Monday. And without further ado, let's dive directly into the chart. So I've been keeping my eye a lot on the CME futures chart because I think that Bitcoin has been respecting this one the most recently. And you can see that we are still in this uptrend we're still in this triangle formation. We've touched the bottom three times now, and every time we have had a bounce to the upside. So this is still showing strong support by the bulls, right? Having a look over here, I also want to point out something interesting. Not only does this trend hold up on the CME futures chart, but the green line right here, which you could see represented the previous resistance back here, once we broke above it, now it became support. Well, this line has actually held up for quite some time, and I am in anticipating that if we do continue, this is bullish for Bitcoin, and we're looking for an absolute breakout from this pennant probably by, uh, probably by July 4th. So uh, yeah, there you go. That would probably be a, a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> a little bit of an Independence Day uh, celebration over here in the U.S. But I know. Let's talk about the bearish scenario. What happens if we break down, right? Well, having a look right here, you are noticing that yes, we are unfortunately below the 21 exponential on the daily. This is not good for Bitcoin. Now we have fallen below it before and had some fake outs like we did back here in May 24th through 27th, where then we got above it and then you will notice that it did once again act as support. So if we do fall short term, what is the level I'm looking at? Well, I would assume that we would be held up if we do think that we are in a bit of a bullish trend right now by the 200 daily, which could bring us down to possibly $8,164. But I know what you're saying. That's not enough pain. We need more capitulation. We need lower levels. We need Bitcoin to go to $50. Well, I don't know if you're going to get that wish, guys, but you will notice that the 50, or excuse me, the 200 daily has gotten above this blue box territory. Now, I do think that between the level of 8,100 and 7,800 is sort of the last sort of support zone for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin falls below $7,780, the bottom of this blue zone, then I do think we would have a good argument for Bitcoin reversal to the other side. Now, I want to show you one interesting chart super quick before we start talking about bearish scenarios for Bitcoin. So the interesting thing right here is if we look at this chart and we keep it in the logarithmic view, you'll actually notice that if we go from the top of this candle right here to where we closed out at the all-time high, down to where we had a nice solid close here, Bitcoin 
is actually trending above the previous resistance, right? Now, if we actually take the log out, you'll notice that Bitcoin is actually now being held down by the resistance. So it really does depend on how you're looking at this chart. And you do notice that most people will draw lines and flip charts to basically accommodate their bias. Well, I'm not trying to really have any bias today. I'm just trying to look at what we have in front of us. So you could see that even if Bitcoin was to fall all the way down to the bottom of this support that we've had down here, we stayed below it just briefly during our Black Thursday event. Well, then you actually could potentially see Bitcoin maybe retest the low 6,000s. That is a possibility. And if we move it back to the log chart, we come down a little bit lower, then you might even see Bitcoin reclaim that $5,945 level. However, really quick, I do just want to put back on the 200 weekly. The reason that I don't think we'll go that low is because we will have the 200 weekly still moving upwards over time, which is why I'd say that probably you're still looking at around the $6,400 level at the absolute lowest possible buy for Bitcoin. Okay. So lots of people asking me for my bearish scenario, right? I don't want to be a Bitcoin bull every day, although you know, long-term I'm a Bitcoin bull. So there you go. Let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think Bitcoin would fall lower than $6,400? I personally don't think that. So if you see Bitcoin hit 6,400, I'm not sell, I'm not telling you to sell the house and sell the kids and sell the car. And you know, I'm just kidding guys. Don't do that. But Hey, could be a good opportunity for one last chance before we actually start trending back to the upside and then go for our major blast off. So there you go. Everyone was asking about it. And you know, like Donald said, he says, I've been seeing more and more comments saying Bitcoin going down to support is unlikely. Um, but that's not how Bitcoin works. Retraces are very vicious crashes, uh, more so. And you can see right here, he points out times where we have had, you know, 36%, 41, 38, 37, 33. And this was in a bull run, by the way, we were having 30% to 40% pullbacks in a massive rally. Okay. 40%, etc. cetera. We had this crazy 50% black Thursday. Um, oh no, excuse, excuse me. That, oh no, that was over here. 63%. Wow. That was a uh, crazy times, crazy times, but guys, we need to move on with this video enough on the negativity. So I do want to talk about one positive thing, which is uh, minor capitulation. How is that positive, right? Miners are capitulating. Well, the good news is that this actually allows more efficient miners to remain in the market. This leads to smaller proportion of miners offloading their Bitcoin balance sheets, which reduces the downtrend pressure on the price, right? And eventually they're going to run out of Bitcoin to sell. So that is the good thing. But let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the ultimate game being rigged, okay? And I want to actually play a clip from this video that came out from the Max Kaiser show with the CEO of, I think it's CoinFloor, and he basically compares um, the situation to a game of Monopoly, except you start the game and, you know, they already have all of the important pieces. So I want to play this clip super quick, and then I want to talk about a few more examples, and uh, yeah, then we'll get to the big news of the video. Bitcoin has the potential to provide an alternative. If you're playing a game of Monopoly and someone's got all of the hotels, and you start a new game and they start with all the hotels. It's not a very fun game to play. But we now have an opportunity to exit that game and play a new game from the beginning. And we've got a new currency that has no basis in any other historical system. It's not like any other store of value that we have available to us, like real estate or stocks and shares and so on. It plays by its own rules. And the master of the game is a computer program. It has no emotions, but it's completely objective, impartial, and fair. And that's all you can ask for. It's the completely meritocratic environment. And that's a game that if you're playing with the passion and, and um, energy that, that I'm sure every person can bring to bear, and definitely people from the black community can, then they will do very well over time. And even U.S. Secretary Treasury Steven Mnuchin has come out and says that it is clear that additional shutdowns, especially to deal with the virus, um, are impossible. He basically says that those in charge have learned that the collateral damage is too great. He says we can't shut down the economy again. I think we've learned that if you shut down the economy, you're just going to create more damage. And, uh, you know, like Bitcoin said... 
A picture is worth six trillion words, right? Let's just print more money. Well, guys, you've seen right here that Spain's coalition government is planning to cut cash payments and aims to gradually eliminate cash as well, moving towards a cashless society, right? So it says the Socialist Party tried to reduce the maximum limit for cash payments to 2,500 euros to 1,000 in early 2019, but failed. However, they're looking to do that again, but even worse than that is what you're seeing basically happen over in Lebanon. Since October of last year, You've had the Lebanese pound losing 70%. We're seeing hyperinflation all over the place. They say the protesters have directed their rage against banks. Bank buildings have already been burned down. Demonstrators have thrown Molotov cocktails at police. In and, and you've seen stones thrown at the army. We've seen what's been going on around here, right? So obviously things need to change, guys. But I do want to end today's video on a little bit of a posit positive note. And I do want to keep today's video a little bit short, guys. You know, just kind of get straight to the point here. Nothing, not really too much news to talk about, but I really did want to just sort of bring bring you that uh, little update. But basically, here it is. The new comptroller, Brian Brooks, has just become the new top banking regulator for the Trump administration. That's the guy I showed you his picture of in the beginning of this video. His last job was general counsel to Coinbase. I'm sure most of you know who Coinbase is, although we do disagree with a lot of their practices, potentially selling information to the IRS, whatever. But Point being, now he is acting as comptroller, and it says basically blockchain is not the problem. He thinks blockchain is the solution. According to him, he says blockchain has the potential to connect up in a decentralized network all kinds of data. It has the ability to create large, fiction-free, decentralized networks of people. There is a huge and great promise in blockchain and crypto. So he doesn't leave crypto out of the equation. It's not like you know blockchain, not Bitcoin. Interestingly, he's looking for decentralized networks in general. He cited Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP as well to solve many of the problems hindering more than 1,000 financial institutions under his purview. He actually went on to mention in, in the article about how there's some uh, stipulations where banks have to still fax each other things, which is like crazy, like using fax. But anyway... Um, he does say he has a deep understanding of the differences between Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Um, and he actually doesn't think that the federal government should issue digital currency. So that's interesting. He hopes that by rooting out regulations specifying specific technology, he'll open up the door to new technologies, especially blockchain. So is this guy a Bitcoin bull? Well, he did work over at Coinbase for a little bit, and it says that he is definitely pro-blockchain, and he's not against cryptos. So take it with a grain of salt, but for me, I think this is positive moving forward. And that is it for me today, guys. We're keeping today's video nice and short. If you want to win a Ledger Nano S, drop a comment below. Join the free Telegram group. Uh, we do have links above for that and below. And that's it for me, guys. Be safe. Things could get a little bit crazy leading into the week. You guys know long term, I'm a Bitcoin bull. Hope you appreciated my bearish video since a lot of you have been requesting it. And that is it for me. Enjoy the rest of your day. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.